So last week I put out a Facebook status and I asked people to upload their best portraits into the comments section and if I got enough then I would maybe make a video. Well that's what this video is about. Thank you everyone who submitted. Uh, really really pleased with some of the work that's coming through. Uh, so now I'm going to just go through them, critique them a little bit and let you know what I think. But before I do that, um, if you want to keep up to date with everything I'm doing on Facebook, uh, be sure to go to the likes button here and then go to get notifications. Because of Facebook's um, algorithm, not everyone can see my uh, updates, my Facebook posts. So if you do click that, then you'll definitely see it in your timeline. But anyway, that's up to you. So anyway, let's go to the Facebook post. Scroll down. Um, I'll start from the bottom and work my way up. Uh, so just go to the bottom here. Okay, so our first picture is uh, Re uh, Rebecca Archer. She's uploaded a couple here. So this first one that she's uploaded, this black and white image, um, what I would have uh, changed about this shot is uh, looking at the post-production work on here, the uh, black and white is a little bit flat on his face. So when I start, when I started doing photography, uh, when I was in Lightroom and Photoshop, I would take that saturation slider and bring that all the way down to the bottom side of black and white image, and pretty much just left it there. Um, I don't know what you did, Rebecca, but I know I'm just uh, thinking from my personal experience that when I used to do that, the black and white images never looked like they had a lot of life in them, look, look, they looked quite flat. Um, so the way I overcame that was uh, messing around with levels and with curves and adding a bit of contrast, which I think is what this shot could benefit from Rebecca if you just added a bit of those, um, added a bit of those, added uh, either of those um, tools in these programs. So I adding a bit of contrast will uh, bring out the highlights and it will crush the blacks and make them just a little bit more contrasty. Because um, so at the moment it's just a little bit flat. So I think if you did that, that would help really make this shot um, look good. Uh, moving on. Um, so you... Uh, the same with your with your other one. So yeah, I think it looks like you've used a bridge camera it looks like you have a bridge camera which would explain the tonal detail that you get with the other one so you don't get as much detail uh, with bridge cameras as you do DSLR so if you'd have shot that with a DSLR you would have had more uh, of a dynamic range from highlight to shadow in order uh, to manipulate that you can still manipulate that just not as efficient as you would with a DSLR um, looking ahead to our next one so this is by Burns Burns, I love this photograph. This is a really, really nice example of a black and white image. I love the difference between the highlights and the shadows here. So my focus is directly onto her face, which is nice and highlighty, and nothing around the around the image is too is um, is too distracting. Everything's quite dark. So the only so the brightest thing in the image is the face. Uh, which is what our eyes are naturally drawn to, and I can see it looks like it's taken through a window. We can see a sign here, so we can so we know that it's in Spain. Because oh yeah, it says there. Um, yeah, really like this image. I uh, don't think I would change it. Really good work. Well done. Love it. Uh, Trevor. A uh, really nice, vibrant image. Really like this one. Uh, for me, I think what I would uh, what um, what I would change is I think it's a bit too contrasty. Um, I think you could uh, hold back a little bit on, yeah, on the contrast, um, but I really like the pose. I like the, uh, I think it's, um, yeah, I, I, really, I really like the pose, um, but it's just a little bit too contrasty f for my personal taste. But I do like the vibrancy in the image. It looks really, really cool. Uh, Danielle, uh, I'm not really sure what's going on in this picture. Um, but I do like Charlie Chaplin, so you get so you get a point there. <laughs> uh, Jesse, ah, oh, unfor uh, so unfortunate when uh, when this happens. It just reminds me looking at this shot. It looks like it was. Uh, I think you look like you're indoors, and this is an example when you're outdoors and you've got the sun behind you. So it's always best to have the sun behind you rather than in front of you, because then you obviously get that really um, panda eyes where you get the dark shadows underneath and they're squinting. So it's always best to have the sun behind. But if you do have it behind, then sometimes if it creeps out from behind their head, this is the kind of effect that you get sometimes. So it's um, 
it's just where it just flares just too much in, into the camera, which is, a, which is really annoying because in this situation, Jesse, we're losing way too much detail on the face and the, and the corner is completely blown out, um, but which, which is really annoying. So if only, uh, if only the head was slightly over so it was covering that light, then we would have been able to see more detail. Um, but as a tip, if you are shoot, shooting in sunlight or even if there's a big strong light in the background like in this one don't have it flare don't have it creeping out and then flaring in so try and position their head behind it or just creeping ever so slightly but not too much uh Stephen Lonigan, big shout out to Stephen Lonigan. he was the first person to employ me uh my first job working at not Cuts Garden Center, how are you doing? Uh, this is a picture of my brother-in-law, he didn't mind posing for me, can you tell? Yeah, you can tell. Um, I think what I would change here is just a little bit, this little thing here in the background, just a little bit distracting, my eye is kind of drawn to, especially the orange bits in particular, because they're quite, they're quite highlighty, but uh, nonetheless, I like this, uh, this, the uh, soft light coming in from uh, camera left, possibly sat next to a window, uh, really like that cool pose. Nice, yes, nice little uh, little headshot. Uh, Beatrice, um, uh, I know, I know Beatrice. Uh, so this is a self-portrait. Really, really n nice background. No, nothing distracting. Really cool. Nice lighting. The only thing uh, that bothers me in your shot is I don't know if you've been playing around with the curves or the levels. But I can see that you're losing some detail in the skin tone here, in the in the in the shadowy areas here. Looks like there's a bit of grey, and you can see it's here, and over here, and on the neck, uh, and just un under under the chin here. You lo just losing some detail in some kind. Of, I think it's that it's it's your mid tones. I think um, w that you're losing detail in the colour and. Uh, yeah, that's that's unfortunate. So if you have a little play around with the curves again or the levels, and just make sure those midtones aren't getting affected and turning grey in the uh, alpha channel there. Um, but apart from that, really cool, uh, nice eye level, good focal length. Yeah, that's my that, that would be my only critique. Uh, Bia, uh, I know that this is another self-portrait. Uh, like like the pose, um, but it's just way too distracting uh, for me. You've got some lights going on in the background here, which is highlighting some clutter that you've got going on in the background, which is distracting my eye. So again, um, just uh, make sure you've got a nice clean clean background. Always have the head in a clean spot. That's always a good tip to have. Head in a clean spot. Keep remembering that when when you when you're shooting um but apart from that yeah it's just uh clean clean the clutter up and then you got a cool shot there sandra really like this shot um the tree is acting as a kind of a, a shade for the for the harsh sunlight and it's behind her so we've got that nice little backlight and um sandra's exposed for the face so it's not too so it's not too bright on the face um but I like that we've got a little bit of foreground blur as uh, going on here as well as a little bit of background blur. For me, what I would have liked to have seen, I guess, is an even shallower depth of field, I think, would have made this even cool. So I'll, um, I would have liked to have seen those those leaves completely blurred and just look like a nice creamy creamy bokeh blur. That would have, I think, looked really, really good. You may have been limited with the camera, though, that you had. You may not have had the ability to shoot that, but that would be my critique. But other than that, really cool shot. I like it. Uh, Tracy, nice little shot there. I, th I think it looks like it was in a car. Could have been moving because it is slightly blurred. So I don't know if... Um, if the car was moving, but really, a really cool shot um, of this uh, little baby, little bubba. Dan Wise is my old music teacher, and well, what can I say? I don't even remember that shot being taken. Let's just uh, move on from that one. <laughs> Man, really? <laughs> sod okay <laughs> olivia uh i really like this shot i love it's so nat yeah natural light canon 60 you can tell um there's probably a window behind the behind you olivia um 
which is obviously going to give you a uh, the really best nice soft light. Uh, for me, if the if uh, the chin had been brought up slightly, because it feels like the eyes are a bit just overstretching a touch there, and you can see one eye is kind of more open than the other, so the chin up kind of would have eliminated that. But I like her pose though. She's kind of got like a thing like, yeah, you can photograph me. It's all right. I'll let you. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> uh, yeah, cool shot. Uh, Paul, great shot, love it, love it, uh, love the vibrancy, I uh, wouldn't really change anything about it, I mean, what you, what you do is something that I would never attempt myself, um, yeah, I, I, so I don't really want to critique it because it's, uh, it's kind of a, an area that I've never really explored myself, but it looks good to me, I like it, I like her pose, I think it's really cool. Uh, yeah, love the edit on that. Really good stuff. Jessica, great shot. I really like it. I, I like the model. I like the dress. Her hair looks amazing. Um, for me, I think that you could have um, the post processing, processing uh, could have been a could have been a bit bit um, punchier. So it's a little bit flat. I would have liked a little bit more contrast. Again, playing around with the levels and the curves option. Don't ne not necessarily both, just one or the other, just to really help make this image uh, pop. But I like the depth of field, nice and blurred background. Yeah, really nice, really nice stuff. Some really good work. Tamsin, again, lovely, nice soft light um, that's obviously behind the camera. Really, really nice. I like the pose, it's very natural. Um, no, wouldn't really change a thing. Yeah, looking good. I uh, really like this shot. I, I know I said before about having the sun behind the subject, but I think for this for this example, I think it kind of works because I think uh, I think it's using harsh light in general with guys. I like to use anyway because I think you can. Uh, I think guys like it because it makes jaw lines and it just everything looks more prominent, more solid. Um, just looks more contrasty. I think it's. I think guys can get away with that look, and uh, I think he can get away with it as well. It's a really cool, really cool pose. Nice natural kind of in mid walk. Uh, the processing is different. I like it. It's just a just cropped out the hand a little bit here, which is which is bugging me, which is annoying. But um, I like the comp uh, apart from that. Yeah, really good work. I like it. Marie loved this shot. Um, I love it. Just uh, the only thing that bugs me is the door frame or a, some sort of frame is kind of creeping into the shot. But it's interesting that you went with a Dutch angle just to make it a little bit different. But I would have liked to have. I I think this shot would have looked better in color. I do. I I looking at what's in the shot. I imagine that that would have been nice and colorful and what she was wearing and the dungarees and uh, her hair looks kind of light, maybe blonde. I think this shot probably would have looked better if it was left in color. Um, but I kind of like the Dutch angle uh, going on. It's different. I like different. Different is good. Uh, Matthew, really, really, I've always liked your work, man. Really good stuff. Check out uh, Matthew Harris Photography. Um, I do. I, I, if I'm being honest, I have seen better uh, from you. Um, I, I've seen your work, and I, I do think that you have taken better shots than this. But I've have only just realised that the that the mermaid is kind of doing a very similar pose to your model. I'm sure that was intentional, but I've only just noticed it. <laughs> but I like um, her look. It kind of matches the the kind of the textured background. It's got she's got a very vibrant kind of dark that kind of I really, really like that that look. It would have been cool if maybe the hair was down on the other shoulder. If you were trying to emulate um, this, the kind of mermaid look. But, um, if her arm was down, I would have maybe said, "Yeah, leave the hair off the shoulder to kind of show off that the shoulder line." But as we're not really seeing the shoulder because her arm's in the air, then um, I would have maybe suggested bringing the hair forward and maybe help matching the uh, picture on on the. Uh, on the vest, that's the word. Uh, and I like the light coming in as well, it looks cool. Uh, Leanne, uh, looks like this shot was taken if we, with an onboard flash. Um, nothing wrong with, a not, with an onboard flash, but I personally like to get my flash off of the 
uh, the camera and, and get it um, and have the flash angled. So then you have a nice uh, difference between highlights and shadows. So you got a bit of a contrast there. Even if it was like a, a, uh, a, a flash gun, maybe pointing upwards so you can get the flash bouncing off of the ceiling and down so you can uh, create a more natural light. Is that's, um, That would have been my suggestions to this image. Or even if you don't have that and it was an onboard flash, um, if uh, t uh, I'm sure you carry a, a little mirror around with you, Leanne, so maybe just a little tip. If it was a pop-up flash, which I think it is, you can take your little mirror that maybe you use for makeup that you keep in your bag and maybe try putting um, uh, the mirror in front of the flash, kind of angled, so that the flash comes out, hits the mirror, and then bounces upwards. So you can create the effect of a flash being angled if you have a pop-up flash, which obviously can't be angled, and then you've got a different, a different lighting setup, and um, often with onboard flash, in on auto flash, um, the shutter speed, or sorry, on, when it's on auto, the, the shutter speed kind of gets um, cranked up because it knows it's got flash, and the uh, the unfortunate is when the shutter speed does get bumped up, you lose ambient light. Shutter speed controls ambient, aperture controls flash output. So if you'd have dropped the shutter speed down, we would have been able to see more of this background because it's kind of very underexposed, um, which I would have liked to have just seen a little bit more of the, more of the background. Uh, Janet, looks like this was, looks like this was taken on a, maybe a, a webcam, uh, webcam, but um, same sort of thing. Uh, this is really distracting me. I would have uh, uh, changed that up. And I can see that it's heavily backlit as well. So you've got a lot of light coming in from the back. Um, so it would have been nice to have more uh, a, a stronger or, or more uh, better light in uh, at the front. Because at the moment, this is all... You've got a heavy backlight, which is, which is blown out. And this is really distracting me. But composition-wise... Um, I like the rule of thirds and it's kind of center left with your eyes kind of more cheek towards the right than it is the left. So I like that. Amy, love the, love this shot. Love this shot of the two girls. Really, really cute shot. It looks like you've added extra blur, um, to the image. I can kind of see where it starts here. It's kind of a bit of a prominent line. So I would either soften that so that it's less noticeable to my eye um, or get rid of it um, completely. I don't personally think that you need it. I can see where it's been added slightly here as well. I don't think, you, I honestly don't think you need it, but maybe I would have brought the camera down. So it looks like you've taken a knee, but maybe even go down even further. So you've got more of the foliage in the foreground, blurred in the foreground, and then you've got that nice element of a blurred background and blurred, sorry, blurred foreground and blurred background to add even more depth to the image. And so you can be on the eye line of the girls, but a really nice capture, really nice moment there. You couldn't have posed them into that position. So it was really, really nice work like that. Uh, Rowan, uh, I can see this was taken just by a single strobe. Really, really like uh, like the clean background. Really nice. My only concern is your rule of thirds is the uh, your eye line. The eye line is quite centre, so I would have had to have. If it were me, I would have brought the camera back a bit and then had the eye line a little bit higher up, even maybe cropping the, the top of the head ever so slightly. Um, nothing wrong with that, but your eye line um, for me, I think, would have worked better if it was around this sort of area. Um, and also, if you'd have had access to another speed light or another strobe, have it behind the person so you can create a nice backlight to s separate this subject even further from the background, adding even more depth to the image. Uh, uh, Giovanna, I think it's Giovanna. Um, a nice shot. Not, it's not really a portrait though, but cool shot anyway. Uh, Gemma, uh, does it count? Yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> I like the composition that the dog is looking, is on the centre left and the eye line is looking right. If it was the other way round, um, it, let's just say the composition was moved over so that the dog was centre right and still looking right, then it's it's not really, it's just, 
it doesn't feel right. I, I can't really explain it, but because the dog is looking right, so let's pretend it's any subject. It could be anyone, doesn't have to be a dog. But because the dog is looking towards this negative space here, it kind of adds mystery. So it's, it's, they do it in film all the time. So they always position someone center right, looking right, center, center left, looking right, or center right, looking left to add that mystery or to show whoever the person's communicating with. Uh, yeah, so cool shot. And if I had to change something, um, I would have just maybe edited it slightly differently because it's uh, blending a little bit too much into the background. Possibly would have left it in color. Dan, love this shot, really, really nice, um, nice and clean, uh, like the shallow depth of field, looks really, really nice. Um, the only uh, the only downside, when you're working with such shallow depth of field, you're, you've only got to move slightly and your your focus is out. Now, I can see you've obviously foc uh, you've, uh, focused in on the eyes, but it does look ever so slightly out of focus where the camera might have been, uh, shutter speed might not have been quite fast enough or you just might have been just slightly off. Um, but it's a really nice natural light. Um, I could be wrong with the focusing though. Um, it could be Facebook um, compressing it um, a lot, but really nice pose, nice eye line. Yeah, really, really like it. Good shot. Lorenzo, this looks like something straight out of a film. Looks like a screenshot out of a film. I love it. Uh, really, really like. Um, for me, my favourite thing about this photo is the backlight. If uh, if you can try and imagine if this shot didn't have this backlight, um, this guy would just completely merge into the background um, and it just would have lost so much depth. So just th this is a prime example of, of what a backlight can do and how it can help just separate just that little bit from the background. Um, so I really, really like that. I probably would have liked a little bit more depth to the image. So maybe if it was against a black background, um, would have liked another strobe sprayed against the background, um, just to, just to add even more depth. But, um, I like it because it just looks like it's straight out of a movie. Really cool. Well done, Lorenzo. Uh, Oliver, love this shot. Really, really nice. Like the way you've edited it. My eye isn't too, isn't distracted all, uh, away from anything apart from the face. I really like the way it's edited. I uh, like the colour as well. Uh, and I like the Dutch angle as well. I think if, uh, if I had to change something, maybe where it's darker, where it's dark here, it's just a little bit highlighty here and here. So just I would have just made this a little bit darker and just that a little bit darker and then my entire focus would have just been on here. But I do like this shot, it's really, really cool. Nice pose. Uh, Krish Krishna, really like this photo. It looks like a real, it looks like a genuine capture. It doesn't look like it would, that, that was uh, that was set up, that particular facial expression. Um, look, uh, the only thing I would have changed is I can see that it's a uh, uh, very highlighty here where you're shooting in the sun. So I would have maybe used a diffuser, which is in in uh, get a dif uh, get a reflector and use the middle bit where the sun passes through and acts like a cloudy day. So that would have helped got rid of this harshness on here. But the the depth of field is awesome. I love the color here. This is probably my favorite part of, is the color. Your background is amazing. Really like it. Well done, Krishna. Valerie, love this shot. Really love this shot. Uh, it's so soft. I love the, the makeup is very, very good. Really nice and soft. Um, one thing I would have changed is, uh, like I was explaining about Lorenzo's shot, is the use of having a backlight, if you can have one. I would have definitely have added a backlight and that just would have really helped give a nice punch um, to the image. Um, but I just love the soft light that you've used on, on the front and I like the pose as well, works really well and it's a self-portrait which is even more impressive. But yeah, so I would have added, um, even if you had two lights, had two back lights, one either side of the hair to really help it separate from, from the background. Uh, Andrea, this is um, 
a portrait of my cat Sky. Immediately, the first thing I notice is it is there's red eye, which is always annoying. So that's usually a sign of an onboard flash. So a lot of cameras how now have a red eye reduction mode, which fires two flashes to help eliminate that red eye reduction. So I would have uh, I would try that next time, or just bring it into Photoshop. Um, or even Lightroom and use their red eye reduction tool um, to help eliminate that. Um, yeah, that's, um, that's what I would do on that shot. Jessica, really nice little capture, nice little moment. It's like a reportage shot, it almost looks like a brochure shot. Um, really nice little moment. Um, yeah, that's, that's all I've got to say on that, really cool shot. Another shot with by Oliver. I believe it's the same model as well. Uh, I love it. Really, really nice. Um, love the Dutch angle again that you've gone with. I love the lens that you've used. Um, I would say the same sort of thing that I said before about when I say that your eye is drawn to highlights. So looking here, it's great. Just here, it's a bit highlighty here. My eye is kind of drawn here. So I would have just darkened this bit of foliage and definitely this bit here so that my attention just stays around this area. Um, but I love the pose. Um, really, really nice lens, nice depth of field. Uh, Simon, this is super sharp. Uh, please let me know what camera you use because for Facebook, this is really, I can see the pores in her skin. Um, so, I just love the detail the camera that the camera you've used is amazing. Uh, I can see if you've used looks like a softbox and a, and a re, uh, reflector as well. Always a great combination. If you've got a light, uh, if you've got one softbox, have it kind of aimed higher. And if you've got and you've got a reflector, if you haven't, if you can't afford two lights, then get one light and get a reflector and do what Simon's done here, where you have a light kind of from one angle and have a reflector that's kind of bouncing in and filling in some of those shadows at the bottom here. Um, really, really good combo. I always use reflectors. Reflectors are so cheap, and I love this pose here. Really, really nice. Um, what's I just know is that is that a scar on her? With be interesting to know what that's about. I'm just really, I just love stories in photographs and I just really want to know what that means. If uh, maybe if uh, you can almost draw, uh, draw focus onto that. So um, rather than just taking uh, a pretty picture, which, I've, uh, which nothing against it, it's a beautiful shot, but maybe drawing attention to the scar. I don't know. I just like, I just like to create mystery. That might create a bit of mystery if she's kind of like, if a hand is up here, it's going to be drawing attention to this scar here. Um, but yeah, cool shot. <laughs> uh, Jenny Pattenden, uh, shout out to Jenny. She was my old manager when I used to work at Jessup's and sometimes assists me on shoots as well. Uh, like this shot, Jenny. I know that you've taken better though. Um, I know that you have take, taken better shots, but nonetheless, this is still a really cool shot. Um, I think you're, it's just ever so slightly blurred. That's the my only nick, and that the arm is a little, little bit cropped here, but the composition is, 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 I really, really like it. I like the rule of thirds. It's just, for me, that's, that's the only thing that's bothering me is the hand is cropped, and uh, it's just ever so slightly blurred. But I like the warm tones that have been used, it kind of matches this kind of, looks quite, like quite a fancy um, sofa or a couch, Could have, yeah, it looks like it's at a wedding, so yeah, cool shot. Uh, Renault, um, interesting facial expression, I like the facial expression, um, the, hi the highlights here on the side are just way too blown out, um, so again, I would have probably would have tried using a uh, diffuser um, to try and eliminate this harshness, or even turn the face towards the sunlight and then use the diffuser. So you would have got some really nice contrast uh, on the face there. Because at the moment, it's a little bit flat where there's no real light, there's no real key light hitting it. The, the, only, uh, the, the only real light that's really coming into the scene is the, is the light, which I guess is acting as a kicker because it's coming in from the side, but it's, it's, way, it's way too bright. Um, you lose all detail um, there, but it's a good expression. So I would try using the diffuser, turning towards the light, and then you'll have a really cool shot there. Uh, I think we've come in a few more. Uh, Edel, 
Love this shot. Love the detail here on the eye, eyelashes. Really, really nice shot. Um, like the high key look. Really, really nice. Uh, Pedita. Um, with this shot, it just feels like a snapshot to me. It just looks like it was uh, looks like it was taken on a camera phone. Um, the po the processing. I'm not too hot on the processing. It's kind of it's just green and orange is all I'm seeing color wise, and it's. Uh, I think it probably would have uh, looked a lot better before you started editing it, um, and it's just a, and there's a, there's clutter in the background as well. I would have got rid of this, got rid of this. Um, I like the the I like this light here coming in through the window. Though. I like that. That looks really cool. I like her pose and expression, but again, yeah, I would just uh, change up the editing and get rid of the clutter because my eye is a little bit distracted here. Uh, Dan, uh, interesting photo. <laughs> uh, no, it's uh, really, really cool. Really nicely shot. I uh, love the key light. I can see that another light's been used here as a, as a side light to add some more depth, um, which really, the more side side on you're gonna you're gonna do, the more contrast you're gonna get. And because he's a particularly uh, good looking guy, it's showing off all the contours of his body, which is what guys are obviously going to like as well. So if this light was directly front on, it, he wouldn't look as muscly because you kind of lose the contrast and shadow detail in the contours. But because, Dan, you've gone in from the side, it looks really good. He's obviously a fireman. We can see um, the, the, his bit of his uniform in the background, um, uh, which is cool. No, I really like this shot. Cool portrait. Um, the only thing for me, going back there, is you've just cut off the hand. Um, either cut off... I would, I would say if you're going to crop, either cut from the forearm, but never do on the joints and so never do it on the elbow and never do it halfway in on the hand or on the wrist. So I would have gone from maybe the forearm or to try and show off all the hand. Raphael, love this shot. Really, really, really like the pose. I like the scenery. It's just a little bit too... Um, uh, busy it's very busy in the background um but i don't want to be too crit critical on that because it is a really nice shot it's it's different it's not often um we can get photographs especially well over here that you'll see anything like that um yeah really nice shot i mean i love to use flash outdoors and this would have been an, a really cool shot if uh, you could have used flash wirelessly outdoors but I like the pose. I, uh, yeah, she's she's a real natural in front of that camera. Really like that shot. It's, a, it's pretty cool. Jasmine, Jasmine, I uh, love this shot. Really nice. Like the light is perfect. It looks like sun, like the sun is just setting, and it's the, it's, the sun is at that nice warm golden hour color where it's just hitting the side, and it looks really really cool. Really nice moment. Looks like I don't know. There's there's great mystery to this image. Um, I like the comp the composition of it. Um, I w I probably would crop a little bit more so that we don't see as much this side and try and keep it nice and tight. I want to show as much of this side as possible because she's looking towards the negative space. So I want to see as much of that, and I like the water here. But I would probably just crop out this woman here. I'm a little bit distracted by her, so I would maybe do this sort of crop. Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe something like that, but really cool shot. Uh, Daniel, uh, Daniel Fletcher, is, uh, this shot has got the most likes um, of it, and I'm proud to say that Daniel was one of my ex-masterclass um, uh, students. Uh, Daniel did a masterclass with me and was also in the band of the very first music video I ever shot um, for a band called Sincerity, which we shot about nine o'clock at night um, in the middle of a field, which is pretty cool. But anyway, um, really good work, Daniel. Always like following your work. Um, this was actually, this is actually my favorite portrait you've taken. So I'm really pleased that you've chosen, you chose this one to show everyone because it's, I just, uh, for me, I love her freckles. I love the detail in her face. That that's what draws me is is her freckles. Um, uh, a lot of people, uh, I know a lot of people would uh, um, who who have freckles uh, like don't like their freckles. But 
I mean, I I don't mind I don't mind freckles. I like that kind of um, that um, that quality. That you know that, those features. I I just I used to have freckles when I was younger, and her freckles that you've kind of with the editing, you've kind of really drawn them out more. I think you do notice them more in her because it's black and white. So you're only obviously looking at highlight and shadow, and obviously they're kind of shadowy. They're darker than the rest of her face. Love the pose, like that she's looking towards the light and that her, again, looking towards the negative space, center left, looking towards negative space on the right. Um, really nice. Yeah, can't really fault this shot. Well done, mate. Uh, last but not least, this is a shot of my uncle and <laughs> a complete nutter contemplating having a poo. I particularly like his geek part as well, taken with an iPhone with a cracked screen. Cheers, Uncle. <laughs> okay, well, um, well, that's it, guys. Uh, <laughs> I think the last one we will all agree is the best. Um, thanks very much for watching this video. Um, thanks, ev everyone, for submitting. Uh, I'll probably do this again at some point. I might do uh, your, your best landscape or still life or anything like that to uh, just kind of change it up. So if you uh, didn't if you haven't submitted, don't submit to this because obviously it's done. But um, thanks ever so much for uh, taking the time to watch this video. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.